Hi, um, my name is Liesl. Welcome to the Boulder Bookstore YouTube channel. I'm the kids buyer here for the bookstore. And today, I didn't know what to talk about at all, so I was wandering around the kids' room, and what caught my eye but these giant books that we have. Um, so I thought I'd talk about these and present these, because they're gorgeous, they're huge. They are ginormous, as you can tell, uh, about the size of a small toddler, maybe. Uh, so, you know, clear room on your bookshelf for them, but they're super worth having. Um, this one is called Hidden Planet, and I'm going to show you a couple of the pictures in here, because these are all done in pencil. These are not photographs. These are not um, photography or oil or anything like that. This is actually pencil drawings, and we have a picture somewhere in here of him actually drawing it. So I thought that was pretty amazing. So there's all sorts of um, different uh, informations on things like zebras and owls, birds, you know, all the animals that live around the world. Uh, it's just really phenomenal. So you can look at one page at a time. If you're looking at it, find your favorite animal. But just as a piece of art, it's pretty astounding. So you can't miss it on the shelf, which is what caught my eye today. I noticed that we had this other really super cool book called The Dragon Ark, which is pretty much what it sounds. It's join the quest to save the rarest dragon on earth. And so you get a little history of all the dragons. Here's the crew gallery. So you guys can go through and learn about the dragons and help rescue them. New Zealand. Lots of things to look at. I don't know if anyone remembers those um, Dragonology books with all the little things to open up and the windows and everything like that. It's like that except there's no pieces of paper to lose because it's all flat. Dragon Arc. Then, reaching further afield because the Mars rover? Is it a rover? What's, this, what's the Mars thing named? Anyway, because Mars. We landed on Mars. Uh, I thought this planetarium was pretty awesome. Again, these are all pencil drawings and um, so it's pretty astounding the amount of detail that goes into it. Here is the aforementioned page on Mars, so you can learn about Mars, as well as all the other things, Venus, for instance, uh, the sun, the night sky. Oh, that's really pretty. I guess I'll put that down and look at it later, because that is super cool. Things that happen on this Earth, again, um, we have trees, and it's all different kinds of trees. Again, it's all pencil art and watercolors and things, so it's all illustrated, not photography. Again, there's like roots and bonsai and family trees and all the different sorts of trees in here. Very informative, very beautiful. The font's a little small, so you will have to get glasses. This one took me a little while to figure out what was going on in this one. Um, so I actually had to sit downstairs and read it. It's called Lost in the Imagination, a journey through nine worlds and nine nights. And the conceit is there is a theoretical physicist named Don Gable. And I actually had to look it up because I really wasn't sure if it was fictional or not. And uh, she has these notebooks and these drawings of um, places that she's visited. It's almost sort of a reverse kids story, you know, where the kid gets a magic object and goes on a journey. This one is kids giving it to the adult and she has to break out of her physics sort of all science world and take journeys into imaginary worlds and curiosity and things like that. So there is lots of little beasts that she sees. I think she only has it like a minute or two in each place. So these are just sort of like snapshots which she remembers when she gets back to her um, lab. So it's like a Camelot kind of area. There's a Lilliputian one. There's one in Africa. It looked like there was an Asgard one as well. And I think that once you read it all the way through, you'll discover that it's also, there's a puzzle in it, so it's sort of, you know, read the book, solve the puzzle, enjoy the game sort of thing. And it is something you can look at it again and again. So that is fun. Lost in the imagination. And then the last one, going back to um, real things, is the timeline of science and technology. 
It's a visual history of our world. What I like about this one is it's not just boring lines. You know, this happened and then this happened and then this happened. It does have sort of a lot of um, fluid movement to it, so it's a little more wavy and, um, well, fluid. Fluid would be a good word for that. Uh, so there's the Byzantians. Here's the 13th century. So it seems like it'd be a lot more fun to read and, you know, you're going to have to put it on the floor and maybe turn it around a lot because you certainly, lap reading might be hard with a book this size. And that's what I saw. We do have a whole shelf of great big books um, that I didn't get to bring up because they're heavy. And I hope you get a chance to come in and see them. If you like what you see, please subscribe and thanks and have a good day.